Did you know that Easter, the most important Christian holiday, has ancient pagan roots? That's right, the celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is actually influenced by the worship of ancient goddesses, such as Ishtar, Inanna, and Astarte. How did this happen? And what do these goddesses have to do with eggs, bunnies, and chocolate? In this video, we will explore the fascinating history and mythology behind Easter, and reveal some surprising secrets that you may not know. We will focus on three main regions, Mesopotamia, Europe, and the Near East. Let's begin with Mesopotamia, the cradle of civilization, and the home of one of the most influential goddesses in history, Ishtar. Stay tuned. Ishtar was the Mesopotamian goddess of love, war, fertility, and sexuality. She was worshipped by the Sumerians, Babylonians, Assyrians, and other ancient peoples for thousands of years. She was also known as Inanna in Sumerian, and Astarte in Phoenician and Canaanite. She was the Queen of Heaven, the Star of Venus, and the Mother of all living things. She had many temples, shrines, and statues dedicated to her, and her cult was very popular and powerful. She was also the main character of many myths and legends, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Descent of Inanna, and the story of Ishtar and Tammuz. One of the most famous stories about Ishtar is the one that relates her to Easter. According to this story, Ishtar had a lover named Tammuz, who was a shepherd god and a symbol of vegetation and life. Tammuz was killed by a wild boar, and his death caused the plants and animals to wither and die. Ishtar was so grief-stricken that she decided to go to the underworld, the realm of the dead, to bring him back. She had to pass through seven gates, and at each gate, she had to remove an item of clothing or jewelry, until she was naked and powerless. When she reached the throne of Ereshkigal, the queen of the underworld, she was struck by a curse and turned into a corpse. The world above became dark and barren, and the people mourned for Ishtar and Tammuz. However, Ishtar had a plan. She had instructed her faithful servant, Ninshubur, to seek the help of the gods if she did not return from the underworld. Ninshubur went to the god Ea, the lord of wisdom and magic, and begged him to save Ishtar. Ea agreed, and created two beings, called the Kurgara and the Galater, who had the power to revive the dead. He sent them to the underworld, and gave them a special water and a special plant. They found Ishtar's body, and sprinkled the water and the plant on her. She came back to life, and was allowed to leave the underworld, on one condition, she had to find a substitute to take her place. She agreed, and returned to the world above, accompanied by the demons of the underworld, who were to ensure that she fulfilled her promise. As she ascended, she passed through the seven gates, and reclaimed her clothing and jewelry. She also restored the light and life to the world, and the people rejoiced. She looked for a suitable replacement for herself, and found Tammuz, who was sitting on his throne, oblivious to her ordeal. She was angry and jealous, and decided to make him her substitute. She ordered the demons to take him to the underworld, and he was dragged away, crying for help. His sister, Jeshtiana, heard his cries, and offered to share his fate. She agreed to spend half of the year in the underworld, while Tammuz spent the other half. This explained the cycle of the seasons, and the alternation of life and death. The people celebrated the return of Ishtar and Tammuz every year, by holding festivals, rituals, and ceremonies. They also honored them by offering them eggs, flowers, and cakes, as symbols of fertility and rebirth. So, how does this story relate to Easter? Well, there are several connections and similarities. First of all, the name Easter is derived from the name Ishtar, according to some scholars. The word Easter comes from the Old English word Eostre, which is the name of a Germanic goddess of spring and dawn. Some historians believe that Eostre is another name or aspect of Ishtar, and that the Anglo-Saxons adopted her cult when they converted to Christianity. Others argue that Eostre is a different goddess, or that she never existed at all, and that the word Easter is simply a translation of the Latin word pacha, which means Passover. 
However, the fact remains that the name Easter sounds very similar to the name Ishtar, and that both are associated with the spring equinox, the time of renewal and resurrection. Secondly, the story of Ishtar and Tammuz has some parallels with the story of Jesus and Mary Magdalene, according to some interpretations. Jesus was crucified and died, and his body was placed in a tomb. Mary Magdalene was one of his followers and lovers, and she went to the tomb to anoint his body. She found the tomb empty, and saw an angel who told her that Jesus had risen from the dead. She then saw Jesus himself, and he told her to tell the others the good news. She became the first witness of the resurrection, and the apostle to the apostles. Some scholars suggest that Mary Magdalene is a Christian version of Ishtar, and that Jesus is a Christian version of Tammuz. They argue that the early Christians borrowed and adapted the ancient pagan story to suit their own beliefs and purposes. They also point out that Mary Magdalene is often depicted with an egg, a symbol of Ishtar, and that her name means, Tower, which is also a symbol of Ishtar. Thirdly, the story of Ishtar and Tammuz explains the origin of some of the customs and symbols of Easter, such as eggs, bunnies, and chocolate. Eggs are an ancient symbol of fertility and rebirth, and they were offered to Ishtar and Tammuz as a sign of gratitude and hope. The tradition of coloring and decorating eggs dates back to the ancient Persians, who exchanged eggs as gifts during the spring festival of Noras. The tradition of hiding and hunting eggs dates back to the ancient Egyptians, who believed that the sun god Ra was born from an egg, and that the egg was hidden by the god Thoth. The tradition of eating chocolate eggs dates back to the 19th century, when the first chocolate eggs were made in France and Germany, and became popular in Europe and America. Bunnies are also an ancient symbol of fertility and rebirth, and they were sacred to Ishtar and Tammuz. The legend of the Easter bunny dates back to the 17th century, when the German immigrants brought the story of the Osterhaas, or the Easter Hare, to America. The Osterhaas was a magical hare who brought eggs to the children who were good and obedient. The tradition of making and eating chocolate bunnies dates back to the 20th century, when the first chocolate bunnies were made in America, and became a favorite treat for children and adults alike. So, we have seen how Ishtar and Tammuz influenced the name, the story, and the customs of Easter. But they are not the only pagan deities who have a connection with Easter. There are also the Norse and Celtic gods and goddesses, who have their own myths and legends about the spring equinox. Let's take a look at some of them. The Norse pagans celebrated the spring equinox as a time of renewal and rebirth, and they honored the gods and goddesses who were associated with these themes. One of them was Freya, the goddess of love, beauty, fertility, and magic. She was the wife of Odin, the king of the gods, and the mother of many children, including the twin gods Freyr and Freya. She was also the leader of the Valkyries, the warrior maidens who chose the slain heroes who went to Valhalla, the Hall of the Slain. She had a chariot pulled by two cats, and she wore a cloak of falcon feathers that allowed her to fly. She was also the owner of the Brisingamen, a magnificent necklace that was made by four dwarves, and that enhanced her beauty and power. She was a generous and compassionate goddess, who helped the humans with their love and fertility problems. She was also a fierce and independent goddess, who had many lovers, including her own brother Freyr, and the giant Breezing. She was often associated with the spring equinox, as she represented the renewal of life and love after the winter. She was also associated with Easter, as some scholars believe that her name is the origin of the word Friday, which is the day of the week that precedes Easter Sunday. Another Norse god who was related to the spring equinox was Ostra, the goddess of dawn and spring. She was also known as Eostre, the same name as the Germanic goddess that we mentioned earlier. She was a beautiful and radiant goddess, who brought light and warmth to the world after the long and cold winter. She was the daughter of Sol, the sun goddess, and the sister of Mani, the moon god. She had a chariot pulled by two horses, and she rode across the sky every morning, announcing the arrival of a new day. 
She was also the patron of the hares, the animals that were sacred to her. She had a special bond with a hare named Lepus, who was her loyal companion and messenger. She was also fond of eggs, which she considered as symbols of new life and hope. She was celebrated by the Norse pagans during the spring equinox, when they held feasts, bonfires, and dances in her honor. They also decorated eggs with bright colors and patterns, and gave them as gifts to their friends and family. They also believed that Ostra could make the eggs hatch into magical creatures, such as dragons, unicorns, and phoenixes. A third Norse god who had a connection with the spring equinox was Baldr, the god of light, joy, and purity. He was the son of Odin and Frigg, the king and queen of the gods, and the brother of Thor, the god of thunder. He was also associated with the spring equinox, as he symbolized the triumph of light over darkness, and the return of joy and warmth after the sorrow and cold. However, Baldur's life was not always happy and peaceful. He had a terrible enemy, who was none other than Loki, the god of mischief and lies. Loki was jealous and hateful of Baldur, and he wanted to ruin his happiness and reputation. Baldur's death was the beginning of the end of the world, according to the Norse mythology. It was the first sign of the coming of Ragnarok, the final battle between the gods and the giants, which would result in the destruction of everything. The only hope for Baldur, and for the world, was that he would be resurrected after Ragnarok. This hope was also shared by the Norse pagans, who celebrated Baldur's memory every spring equinox, and who hoped that he would return one day, and bring back the light and joy to the world. We have seen how Easter is influenced by the myths and legends of Ishtar, Ostra, and Baldur, and how they are related to the themes of resurrection, rebirth, and renewal. We have also seen how some of the customs and symbols of Easter, such as eggs, bunnies, and chocolate, are derived from the ancient pagan traditions and practices. We hope that you have enjoyed this video, and that you have learned something new and interesting. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment below. We would love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Thank you for watching, and Happy Easter!